So I'd like to start with uh, my own strategy and I'll go point wise. I'll start from prelims, then mains and then uh, personality test also. I think uh, you will be appearing for 22, right? Yeah, so then that will be fine. So let's start with prelims. Uh, mostly we say that uh, prelims is the most difficult part of the journey. That is because the preparation that you have gone through for the past one year, two years, three years, or even four years in my case, it will be judged, let's say judged only, it will be judged by the institution of your choice in just two hours span, right? So what you have to do for prelims, I'll start with that, and I'll divide it into two, the static part and the current part. So uh, talking about the static part, there is some lines of difference when we talk about the static and current. So for static part, let's talk first. For static, you should be restricting yourself to limited sources. Like if you are doing your history, like modern India, if you're doing. So I followed simply two sources, Spectrum and uh, modern India book, the Vipin Chandra NCRT. Now, in my case, I had some problem with remembering the facts of modern India. So what I did was I took another book of Vipin Chandra. It is the big book, which is India's struggle for independence. So I made notes out of that book, but that is not mandatory only because I had issues with remembering. So then I took up that source. The key is that you limit your preparation of static to limited sources. Now, when you have limited sources, the uh, advantage is that you can revise it multiple times. So the second point is that at least six to seven times you must have revised your static portion before you sit for the prelims exam. So if you haven't revised it, what happened with me in the 2018-19 attempt is that even very simple questions like a book on Gandhi, it was, I don't remember the name of the book, but it was a book written by Gandhiji. So it, it was supposed to be a very simple question, but I made it wrong because I hadn't revised my uh, spectrum multiple times. So first thing, limited sources. And second thing, five to six revision cycles. This is what you have to do for the static part. Now, there are some parts which are both static and current. For example, the environment part. So for that, your foundation has to be absolutely strong. Like uh, the Shankar Iyer's book on environment is the most widely used book. And it is also a very good source. And, but you should buy the latest edition because, uh, you know, they keep segregating it in a better way. So whatever uh, latest edition you have, you must read it again at least four to five times. And if you want, if your environment is not that strong, you can even make notes out of the facts. Now, when you make notes, uh, I'll also talk about the note making thing on prelims a uh, bit later. So uh, this environment has to be complemented with current uh, parts also. Like only reading that Shankar book won't do. You will have to keep updating your environment with, from the current affairs section that you do. Now, when we talk about now this static part, you have to absolutely focus on the static part even more than your current. That is because you can predict questions on the static part. Like you can predict what uh, quality questions or what uh, and economics questions that you can get. And these, this static part will give you the foundation marks. If you commit three to four mistakes in, a po in quality questions in prelims, you're absolutely out of the race. To be brutal, you're absolutely out of the race. This is what happened with one of my friends and that's, what, that's the experience that I'm sharing. So static has to be very, very strong, no matter how, and you have to, of course, uh, focus on current, but static cannot be left loose. Now, the problem here is that static anyways, the name is also static. So we get bored reading again and again, but you have to enjoy that boredom also. I understand that reading current is very interesting and static would get boring over time. But then you have to endure that boredom because those foundation marks, that 50 marks you will get from static only. So now when I talk about the current part, you understand the three major points that I told you. Number one, uh, limited sources. Number two, the revision cycles have to be very strong, six to seven times. And number three, the parts which are static and current, you have to complement them both, right? So converge them. Now when I talk about the current part, Three, four things I'll tell you about the current because it is very dynamic. So you cannot expect yourself to attempt every question that you get in your prelims exam, which is absolutely okay. You don't have to be worried about attempting each question in the, uh, in the final exam. So what you do for current is all of us follow one monthly magazine. No magazine is good or bad. Just be neutral towards it. Whatever magazine you follow is the best because more or less the information will be the same only. 
so first thing anyways you have to follow one monthly magazine the way you follow but again you have to uh, revise it multiple times now if you want some people will be engaged in making notes all the time maybe it gives you a sense of satisfaction that yes we are doing something but more than making notes what you have to focus on is that you are re remembering and you are able to recall whatever you have read even without the notes because sometimes everything does not have to be noted down on paper when you start writing something from a monthly magazine to your notes many times you will feel that as if the book you were copying so hardly don't do that if you have very important facts that you tend to forget maybe that you can note down again in bullet points but then uh, just noting a book down or noting your man monthly magazine will give you no uh, nothing it will give you pseudo satisfaction sort of a feel so you should avoid and refrain that i'll tell you what sort of notes you need for current so first thing you religiously follow your monthly magazine plus revise it multiple times the second thing now you cannot rely on someone else's intelligence right because your monthly magazine is someone else's intelligence it is the institute's intelligence but you do not forget that you have to rely your, on your own intelligence in the exam so what you do for that is i used to make uh, daily notes from the newspaper every day again religiously the way i used to follow my monthly magazine similarly i made my own uh, newspaper notes also not one day i missed the newspaper of course uh, one day or something can be missed out but then you try to cover up the next day now how to make notes for uh, the prelims for current i followed hindu the hindu for my prelims and mains both and then for personality test i also added mint and indian express so first talking about prelims what you do is i used to make uh, prelim specific and main specific notes se separately for uh, from the newspaper so for the prelim specific notes what you have to focus on are the facts right so if you get some new species or if you get some some new law which is going to be passed you you have to note it down in the prelim section now again in the uh, you cannot ignore any page like when we read the newspaper you often see any website or even your peers are going to tell you that you know you can read the first page and then you can directly go to the economics page and then you can directly go to the uh, environment page or the science and technology page but i would like to tell you uh, it is very stupid to ignore any page maybe you can get any information from any page right so you should not ignore any page of the newspaper second thing we we often think that uh, this newspaper uh, reading is taking a lot of time but initially even if you take 2 hours on a single newspaper that is okay and i'll also tell you why that is so because you have just started reading the newspaper so you hardly have any background of any news that you see so whatever you see will be important for you so even if you get very involved or interested in the thing and you start reading it it is fine because over time within 3 4 months you will start getting background of every piece of news that you see and then automatically your time is going to reduce even during that time if you take one one and a half hour in reading the newspaper you are not alone everyone is taking that much time even i used to take that much time even during the interview i used to take at least one one and a half hour to read both the newspaper so initially even if you are taking two hours that is absolutely okay now how to make uh, main specific notes from the current affairs is that uh, suppose in the editorial i see some piece of information on uh, quart suppose so what i'm going to do first of all on the a4 sheet i'll write the paper from which it uh, in which it is uh, required like gs2 first of all i'll write and then i'll also write that it is a part of ir and then i'll start noting down the points now making notes from the editorial is a very uh, fashionable thing right but how to make again is a point of concern suppose you start writing down the editorial line by line that is again not a correct thing to do even if you convert those lines into bullet points that is also not a correct thing so what you have to do is you take out some very read the editorial at least twice initially you will have to read it twice maybe in the later over time you will have to read it just once so when you read that editorial twice you will get to know the crux of the uh, editorial also you will get to you you will have an opinion on it because editorials are mostly opinion based so uh, again also you will get the crux and you will get the basic uh, prominent points that are required you only note down those points in your um, notes that is all that is required for mains points are required for mains plus an opinion is required suppose there is an opinion on an issue and you don't uh, i mean that is not your opinion so then you can simply see it you can you can note down some points of that opinion because mains answer has to be absolutely balanced it's not a personality test that you have to give your own opinion only you will have to give both sides of the coin so even if you don't like that opinion at least note down two or three points 
for later because an issue will not be over in a day maybe next day you note down the points uh, of the other side of the coin so current i'm focusing too much because uh, people tend to use multiple sources for current and then end up doing nothing so only two three things two things i've told you first thing you religiously follow your monthly magazine that you have been doing second thing please do this exercise it is very important and i actually did it in my last attempt only that's why i am stressing on it too much so the second thing make your own current affairs notes the third thing that i would like to say about current affairs is now in static portion i told you rely on limited sources but for current affairs you absolutely have to rely on diversified sources because one particular source cannot give you the information of the world so you have to at least increase your probability of solving the question so what you do the third thing that i did was and i would recommend you also to do suppose you do uh, i mean you follow a, a monthly magazine of some particular institute now what you do you can also take up the current affairs tests of some other institute not that particular institute some other institute and then you can try solving those questions now what that would give you when you solve some questions in a question answer format you tend to remember things more so the, that monthly magazine is followed the other source is also followed and your own current affairs notes and that's enough now whatever your uh, friends are telling you asking you saying just absolutely don't focus on that because you have done your part now do, just doing it won't uh, anyways revision is a constant thing in whatever i'll be saying you will have to keep revising it day in and day out my revision cycle went like uh, every two months i used to revise whatever notes i had written and not just the previous two months the initial notes also that i have i had made now uh, a basic revision cycle i would like to focus on uh, of for static plus for current affairs so my revision cycle went like suppose i am reading a thing today so i'll revise that thing on the second day that means tomorrow then i revise it on the seventh day and then the 30th day okay so this you can't uh, mentally do it so what you can do you can simply make a time table for yourself you can write the topic that you did today you write the second day seventh day 30th day and then tick mark whether you've done it or not because till the 30th day you will start forgetting even the topic that you had to read like even the heading that you had to read so what you do you make this table and you tick tick it mark tick mark whatever you've done and whatever you've not done very honestly also put a cross what this will give you is it will give you confidence one number 2 it will it will actually consolidate whatever you have read if you read one thing on the 30th day that means of course you remember some part of it some 10 20% and then again when you read it, it it gets imbibed into you so i strongly recommend this uh, revision cycle for you please do this now this was about uh, the preparation of the one year two years whatever time you are taking one year Uh, or even two years some people are starting off from college days also these days so one year two year thing that i have told you now i would like to focus on the the day of the exam what you have to do on the day which is too premature to tell you but i would like to tell you maybe i get an opportunity next time or not so on that day it is very important in the prelims exam to maintain your mental strength in mains what happens is that once you start writing that nervousness goes off Uh, because you have to write you have that uh, time frame in mind that you have to attempt 20 questions in 3 hours so so it goes off eventually it wanes wanes away but what happens in prelims is you have to tick mark the options so some time like after 3 questions 4 questions again those feelings are going to come up so that mental strength is very much required in your prelims exam particularly so what i followed on the final day of the exam i'll tell you first very important thing that you absolutely must keep in your mind is that for prelims do not rely on your knowledge base i mean don't be extremely confident or under confident about your knowledge base what you must focus and rely on is your common sense and logic see knowledge you have actually acquired in simply in two i mean 2 3 4 years maybe 5 years 10 years but common sense is innate also and you have acquired it over time also since school we have been using this logic this common sense it is within us so you must rely on thing that is yours and logic yours anyway now how you will rely on logic is when your mind is calm i absolutely understand the nervousness that is there on the day of the prelims but you have to understand and explain to yourself one thing that those 2 hours are mine only those 2 hours are mine before that time it's all gone after that time is again it's like at home i can do anything i can judge myself people can judge me whatever but those 2 hours will never come back 
so you enter the examination hall thing i did it so i'm telling you i entered the examination hall thinking that kriti you're not going to know anything because it is upsc it wants to know what you, i mean it's not an exam just for the urban people or for the rural people it's for logical people so i said to myself that kriti you're not going to know anything you simply have to solve each question with your logic that's it that's it now what happened with me i'll give you an example that i got the c code in uh, 2020 and um, luckily unluckily whatever you want to say the initial four pages at least 30 to 35 questions i hardly could attempt with my knowledge because all of those if you see that paper it starts with agriculture the first question itself was from i don't know where so the initial questions were all agriculture environment so answers could be ambiguous so that depressing thing that that thing i could only get out i said to myself that maybe kriti i am not going to go to dholpur house this time so maybe next time so what uh, what happened through this is that i was all calm and composed that okay let it just be what i have to do is i have to utilize this 2 hours in doing whatever i can it absolutely calmed my mind now um, if if you see the 2020 paper most of the questions in environment are solved by logic only for example everyone sugar cane question was there if you've seen the paper sugar cane question we never saw but if you see the options no two options are contra uh, contradicting only so one of them can anyways be uh, eliminated elimination is a very important thing and elimination you cannot do through your knowledge base only you have to use your logic so on that particular prelims day your mind have to, has to be absolutely calm this is the only key to uh, success in prelims and you also uh, like during the preparation you might have uh, practiced a lot you might have made your own innovative uh, magic number in which you get more than 100 uh, like more than 100 500 10 you get that much amount of uh, marks for me that number was 85 to 87 please stick to that number you in the in that one year you have to actually come out with that number and you have to apply it finally also don't go by the paper is simple or the paper is difficult that is for everyone you don't have to worry about it but your magic number should remain constant right so this was all about uh, prelims i like to come on mains now so uh, for mains mains is the most strategic aspect of your preparation because it carries the maximum number of marks so what you have to do for mains is number uh, some things are very important number one note making is very important for uh, mains because you you will tend to forget everything that you read a uh, current part i've already told you it's from the newspaper now i'll tell you notes for the other portion now the other thing that you have to keep in mind while preparing for mains is that each exam each paper gs1 2 3 4 essay and even your option all these papers have a different and unique requirement i'll give you an example for example in essay what you are supposed to do is you have to pour your mind out not just your mind sometimes your heart and emotions also because these days uh, upsc is not giving you an option in either attempting a philosophical essay or a substantial essay you have to attempt one from each section and section 1 is absolutely philosophical so you have to be well versed with both so you have to pour out your mind your heart both in the essay now you can't expect yourself to write uh, an introduction what you are writing in a gs paper similar to that introduction you cannot write in an essay you have to write a longer introduction so this is the requirement of essay that you have to explain it nicely now what is the requirement for gs papers in general is that there should be a basic understanding and a balanced understanding you cannot be absolutely radical you cannot be absolutely extremist towards one end you have to be neutral now let me come to the specifics like for gs1 and gs4 suppose i i'll compare gs1 and 3 both are in absolute contrast like uh, i'm writing a history answer what does a what does an examiner expect out of me that i should know the story so if i know the story how am i going to write it i'm going to write it in paragraph form now i uh, will avoid making flow charts or any of that stuff that we uh, really i mean we we like to make all the all of that i'll i'll try to refrain myself from uh, making all of that in a gs1 history question maybe because a person expects that you know the story and then you also can make an opinion on that story so that is what is expected now what is expected out of you in gs3 is that you substantiate your answer using graphs or using flow charts for example uh, they ask you the post covid economy so how are you going to substantiate it through data through graphs all of the, that you will get from your current affairs notes only so the second thing that you have to keep in mind for mains is the particular requirement of each uh, paper 
like GS1 has to be different, GS3 has to be different. Now, how to make notes for the mains? What I did was I did not make notes for everything. Like in GS2, we have a lot of static parts, like we have polity. So I didn't uh, have to make notes for polity, like because Lakshmi Kant is more than enough. If you read it five to six, seven, eight, that is enough. You will remember that. Yes, but you can complement that polity with the current affairs material. For that, you can make notes. For example, there is something about the president. So you can simply write down president. You can write the article uh, before it, and then you can start writing whatever recent has come in the news. Uh, the second thing that you can uh, do is, now uh, what I did for mains notes is that I focused, first of all, you have to read the syllabus very carefully. So when I read the syllabus, I read the subtopics. So whatever subtopic, I did not have information from one particular source. I restricted to making notes for that subtopic only. For example, in GS2, there is a role of charities, NGOs. So that is a very dynamic thing. Maybe you don't get a question out of it, but if it is there in the syllabus, you have to do it. At least one question you'll get. Even this time, we got a question question from self-help group. So that, that has to be there. So uh, now that uh, I could not get uh, any notes from a particular source, from one particular source. So I consolidated all the information and made notes out of it. For GS3, you have to make uh, your own notes for uh, graphs and for flowcharts. You have to uh, take it from the current affairs also and from some static sources that you have. The next thing for means that you have to take care of is time management. How you're going to do that is the very everyone says time management is important. So the first thing that you can do for time management, apart from practice, that is very obvious, is that you keep some material ready. Like you, you can anticipate questions. If something is going on in the news, you can anticipate, yes, this is going to come. Or there are some static portions that are absolutely important. So that are again going to come. So what you can do is you can keep your introductions and your conclusions for questions ready. Like if there is some scheme in the news recently, so you can keep the introductions and the conclusions absolutely ready with yourself. So what that will do is it'll save your time because everyone says it is true also. That introduction and conclusion both are absolutely important parts of your answer. And that is what shows whether you have understood the question or not. So you can keep them ready so that you don't have to waste your time sitting in the exam and remembering what, uh, what has to be written in the introduction. The next thing that you can do is uh, the introductions that, okay, introduction, I can tell you that what you can uh, keep for introductions. For introductions, you can have data points, you can have quotations. Or you can have definition of any keyword which is given. So for uh, and GS2, like some specifics that I was telling you in GS2 for uh, increasing your marks exponentially, what you can do and everyone tells you also that you add some judgments and article numbers in your answers. Also, you should remember all the SDGs. So wherever you get a question on water, you get a, a question of on education. You can simply start or end with an SDG. Right. Also, you can start with the fundamental duty. You can start with DPSP. All of this will give you an edge over others because even the examiner will be bored of reading the same answer. Now, the next thing that you have to take care in mains exam is easy visibility. Like the examiner does not have so much time that he'll sit and check everything. So what you can do is you can ease this thing out. It has to, your answer should be very much visible to the uh, to the examiner. What you can do for this is one thing is highlighting. And the second very important thing is what subheadings we give in the answer that you can directly take from the question itself. So what that will do is the examiner will get to know that, yes, you've understood the question also, and you know what you have to write in the answer. That can help you again in increasing your marks. Now, GS4, I would like to talk to you in some detail because it is also a scoring thing. And sometimes we fail to forget. I mean, we fail to uh, understand that ethics has its own requirement. Like when you're writing an ethics answer, everyone is going to write the theory part. But what can make you stand out is examples, first of all. So examples, again, uh, what I did, I'll tell you an exercise that I did, and you should also do it. First of all, I took out all the keywords from the syllabus and also the keywords that I could see from the previous year papers. There are some keywords that are, your, uh, that are not explicitly mentioned in your uh, syllabus, but maybe you get a question on it in some year. So what you do, you take an A4 sheet and you start writing down all the keywords on that sheet. Now, what you do from those keywords is you write a lucid definition of three to four lines of that, uh, of that, like for example, honesty. So you write a very clear and lucid definition. Now, definition doesn't mean that you have to use very hi-fi complex words. What, uh, so what scientists say is that if you've understood something, 
you can show that you've understood something only when you use a simple language to explain it right so honesty is what that i don't tell a lie this is the simplest that i can say that i don't uh, i don't fudge anything i don't fudge my documents i'm i'm absolutely transparent this is what we can say now you also remember that using uh, like while defining one keyword you do not end up introducing another keyword in that definition so the definition has to be very simple and you can just keep rereading it and improving it over and over like it should not be a very um, a casual exercise because your definition can be so good that you can start your answer with it now after those writing those keywords leave some space also for that space in that space you can include your life examples on that for example honesty so you you add an example from your own life and you also add an example from the administrative side like any previous ias officer or serving ias officer or even um, these days you can even use celebrities like for uh, you can use the example of sonu sood for uh, compassion that will again make you stand out now don't have any restrictions in your mind that i cannot use this example or that example you can even use the examples of movies why not because this will again give you uh, an edge over the other over others don't be very restrictive in your content or do not be restricted in your thoughts uh, make it make it make your horizon very very broad so what you can do is coming back if, if with the keyword you write the examples because examples will show that yes you know how to apply that concept also this is one exercise that, that i did the second thing that i did was i made some notes of the philosophers that i could use uh in in any answer even in case studies you can use uh, philosophers like if you want to substantiate what you what opinion you are giving in a case study so you can use kant's duty you can even use indian philosophers we we hardly use any indian philosophies so i made it a point that at, i'll at least include nishkam karm in my answer and i actually did it now talking about the quotation type of questions what you can do for quotation type of questions asif sir only told me that for the quotation questions you start with your own quotation like a quotation is given you have to explain it so it will be really great if you uh, can recall some quotation which is of the similar uh, pattern and you write it down in the very beginning of the answer which will give a very good impact that yes the person uh, can on the spot think of something which is very much relevant second thing that you can do in a quotation type of a question is that you include something which is uh, contemporary going on like for example you can include mob lynching in some of the quotation when there is uh, something about indifference so you can include something about mob lynching or whatever is going on like the farmers protest so if you include all of this in your answer it shows how your mind is open to accepting everything and you can put uh, everything into a framework like if you are uh, ethics is what ethics is whatever we are doing uh, right now also i'm i'm ethical or i'm unethical whatever a person is doing in his life all of that is included in ethics so why not include it in your answer also not uh, the very first thing is if you get a question on what uh, are the options available with you and which you are going to choose so a very easy thing that you can do even for time management is that you make a table you write you uh, divide it into columns and you write uh, you write three columns and then you write uh, the option whether you will do it what are the merits of it what are the demerits of it and then at the end you can write what option you are going to choose so what uh, this table gives you is again the easy visibility to the examiner and what it gives it uh, saves your time because case studies are a lengthy even it had, we had one one page case studies so uh, the very important thing in gs4 is completing your paper so all these time saving techniques that you have you can use all of that again you sub, uh, again i would like to stress that substantiate your answer with some philosopher or some quotation that you have read so uh, this was about gs4 uh, so again for uh, mains there are some pointers that revision again is very important you make notes for sub topics that have diverse sources you make notes from the current affairs and you make all uh, bullets points of both the sides of the argument and your answer must be absolutely balanced these are the pointers for the mains now when we talk about the personality test personality test is nothing but whatever you have prepared for the past 3 to 4 years all of that has to be applied in 30 35 minutes now very first thing that i learned in shankar only through the interview guidance program is the uh, first line the lecture started with first line they don't try to hide your personality if it's a personality test why would you hide your personality we all have been raised quite well not bad persons 
so we we should not be afraid of exposing our personality if they want to ask you a personal question don't beat around the bush because they are very experienced people they'll understand that you don't want to answer them so you simply answer them even if uh, even if it is not a very perfect answer no one is perfect so you expose your personality is the first thing that you should do in your personality test second thing please don't go by the ratified answers that are provided in any institute or in any on any website whatever you think you say that don't don't go for any lies if they are asking your opinion so don't give opinions of the supreme court or don't give opinions of the government of course you can do that you can start your answer with that you can give both sides of the argument but then again within a very short period of time if if you do, if you think you can't concise it down you can simply start with something of the supreme court and give your own opinion first of all so that the uh, persons who are sitting on that side of the table they are satisfied yes the person has given the answer at least so don't try to hide your own opinions because our opinions we are all good people our opinions will be good only so you don't have to hide anything you don't have to beat around the bush third thing never ever lie in an interview because they are going to simply smile and you think you will be guilty yourself then only you will start judging yourself so don't uh, don't lie anything whatever you have done you have done i had nothing in my sport so that's fine uh, luckily they didn't ask me anything but even if they had asked me something i would have told whatever is the truth the third fourth thing is what you can absolutely control in the personality test are two things the current affairs part and your dab so for what for current affairs anyways you've been preparing for the past 3 4 years that you have to again keep revising and don't stop reading the newspaper even one day before the interview or on the day of your personality test you simply should go through the newspaper even i did it before uh, leaving for the personality test i went through the newspaper was hindi divas on that day so you know and then i went back to the uh, to lakshmikant and read something about the official language although they didn't ask anything this is all we can control the current affairs we can control we can have an opinion on farm law so why not if you can like there was a question not asked to me but someone uh, that uh, you tell me about farm laws in 3 to 4 sentences now if you haven't prepared it you cannot tell in 3 to 4 sentences you can only do it if you have actually written it down or you you know you have said to yourself at least 3 to 4 times only then you can very concisely uh, say stuff the fifth thing that you should take care is that in a personality test do not speak too much or do not speak too less if you speak too much like uh, we end up speaking a lot when we end up when we speak a lot we end up speaking all trash so uh, like if they are asking you what do you think about a particular issue you simply say it in 3 to 4 very concise and crisp sentences that is enough now don't start explaining if they want some explanation from you they'll they'll simply give you a cross question otherwise you don't start explaining because that will uh, that will you know dilute your answer if you give it only in 3 to 4 sentences they know what you are saying but when you start explaining they they'll be lost in what you are saying so just give them a crisp answer and wait for the cross question if any next is in a personality test always uh, i mean be confident also don't be over confident don't be under confident simply go uh, very calmly do not think about anything do not have an, any baggage in your mind this is true for any uh, any stage of the exam do not go with any baggage what i would also like to say as the concluding remark is that every stage of upsc has a unique requirement it it demands something from you for prelims it demands something different it demands you to be absolutely aware it demands you to be logical in mains it is a it is a study of your it is a test of your knowledge how much you can recall it is a it is a knowledge of recollection so uh, the mains has a different uh, it has a different requirement and personality test has an absolutely different requirement so what the beautiful part of upsc is that each stage has its own unique requirement but you cannot separate this preparation i mean you have to be your preparation has to be absolutely interconnected you cannot stand alone prepare for prelims you cannot stand alone prepare for mains and then leave everything uh, for the interview later on from the very first day you have to prepare for all three stages together so if you have some question you can ask yeah okay so uh, again this is about time management so for a 10 marker you should take maximum 5 6 minutes and for a 15 marker you take 8 9 minutes that when you keep this as your target no then only you will be able to reach a 10 minute for a 15 marker and a 8 9 minute for a 10 marker so okay again to elaborate on this only 
if you do not know an answer in mains so what you do is you leave it for the last i mean for the end you leave it do not try writing it then only because then your other questions are going to suffer so what you do you leave it for the end and then anyways we have read for one year we'll have some generic points for every question that is asked like ncap was asked the scheme on uh, pollution ncap and i had absolutely not read anything about it but still, uh, still uh, even then i could write some generic points for uh, ncap also and i could fill up like it was a 15 marker still i could fill up at least two pages i could fill up so you leave those questions that you don't know for the end and then you try writing some generic point do not leave anything in a mains paper because if you leave it you even lose it. even if you get one mark in that uh, generic point answer no that is a bonus for because we didn't know anything and there's no negative marking so you do that uh, elaborating on this only i'll also say how to i mean start with your mains like which question to do first this is a very common question and a doubt that is uh, that comes up in the mind i'll tell you first what i did Uh, initially i did at least five questions from the beginning like the initial questions are 10 markers uh, see the pattern can change any time i'll tell you about my the time, pattern during my time only before that it was a 12 and a half marks for every question but in our time it was and it has been going on for years now 10 markers and then 15 markers 10 10 questions i mean 10 questions for 10 marks and 10 for 15 marks so what i did i first attempted four or five questions from the 10 markers because uh, first impression is the last impression we have an we have human interface in both mains and personality test so you also have to do the paper very very psychologically i mean you cannot go by the set rule okay write this and you get marks no they are not machines they are humans who are checking your paper so if you if they like your paper no they'll give you super good they don't like it they'll they'll be all agitated and irritated so your paper has to be balanced and the initial question should be super awesome whatever you write in the middle has to it has great importance but whatever image is created in the first five questions no that will continue if in if the image is very good in the first five questions even a bad answer will you know not suffer that much in between if you write some bad answer it will not suffer that much so make it a point that the initial five questions you give absolute time. i mean don't go i mean don't uh, go your off the way and give 15 20 minutes to an answer not like that but uh, put an effort to uh, make make them really good so what i did first five questions i did from there and then i tried to attempt the 15 marker suppose in between i don't want to do some 15 marker or i am stuck somewhere so then i come back to the to to the 10 markers and then again attempt the so set pattern but yes some things you should remember the initial questions and last questions should be really good that will set an impression for you okay anything else Sometimes we feel boring. Yes. Okay. See again. I'll tell you what I think that you have to endure that boredom. For prelims, uh, Hindu is one-stop solution because it will give you all the facts. No, some things it will also give you a PIB. So I, even if I say okay, you go and read Indian Express, so you you know some things can be missing out there. Hindu is absolutely fine for prelims also, mains also. So please don't ignore that. Anything else? zoology no one would be zoology here what would you do before one month of prelim if we or revise our notes then that see whatever notes you have made in the uh, like one month is only for revision don't keep anything or mocks that's all you have to do in your one month so for the last one month if you have all notes prepared you will have anyways so you go by reading the notes for polity for history for environment you can also read your books you can because if even if you don't have notes you can go by reading the books and then again the highlighted portions only because you have limited time so yes for the last one month you uh, attempt some full tests that you'll anyways do some four five tests you attempt in the last one month to gain that confidence and to gain that atmosphere of the exam because ultimately you have to solve questions only and not read there and you revise all your notes especially the current affairs notes you revise at least your own handwritten even if you cannot revise your monthlies you uh, the compilation you can revise you can revise your own notes and you revise other static notes also uh, one week or two weeks before the exam i'll tell you always revise those subjects in which you have trouble like for me i revise polity uh, environment and history modern india all these three things i used to forget so so i revise these only these three particularly in the last of uh, 
before the prelim. That's it. Yeah. Uh, was, uh, I was studying only at that time. I was doing my BSc, MSc. So first of all, it was my mom's dream. So I wanted that to come true. And second thing, I saw uh, many issues in the education sector. I wanted to improve that. That was my basic motive. But now, presently, I want to go into the district and analyze what that problem is. But yes, education is in, in my heart only. I'll work on that. Yes, See, in mains, you absolutely must remember some basic data, like GDP of the country, how it is growing, uh, the unemployment rate, IMR, MR, all these things you must remember for making your answer better and substantiating your uh, arguments. So if you see, if you write a generic answer, you'll get a 5, 5.5. But to increase those marks, what you have to do is you start, even if you start with data, what that will give you? It will give you that you know a view of the economy. So, of course, you don't remember every tidbit, but just simply note down the very important data points for your mains, particularly. For the prelims, you must remember the trends, like how GDP is growing or declining and how unemployment is growing, because that can be asked. It's also there in the economic survey. So one or two questions you absolutely get in prelims. So, yes, I would say personally, I would say that you must remember the data points, even if people say, no, no, that is not important. I would say uh, it'll give you it'll give you extra marks. See, if you. Uh, there, there will be obviously every time in every mains there will be some questions you cannot tackle. So if you write some answers very good, no, those bad answers will be covered up. So in GS3, anyways, these years he is being beaten badly. Only. So it's better that you uh, remember not not only in GS3 and GS2 also if you can remember some data from the social issues, if you can remember some um, articles and judgments that I previously said, please do that. I would. Say. Uh, so this is for the online students. Uh, the strategy session is complete. So if you want to ask any questions, you can uh, turn on your video, raise your hands, unmute yourself and ask uh, any questions. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Uh, ma'am, what is the best solution to secure the marks in paper two at prelims? She said, okay. Uh, see, okay, I'll talk about this elaborately because I didn't even mention CSAT. I'm sorry for that. Uh, for, for CSAT, first of all, you see the previous year questions, okay? So the, in the previous year questions, when you see, you will, you will see, you will see yourself, like attempt the paper just like you are attempting a UPSC paper. And then you sit down, see the answers, analyze what you are strong in like some people will be very good at maths they'll be very good at reasoning some people will be good at english comprehension upsc always is an exam of balance okay so you cannot ignore anything in a in in the entire process so what you do first of all after recognizing your strength you make a strategy for yourself these days maths is uh, the importance of maths is increasing in uh, csat at least 45 to 50 questions you get from maths, reasoning, all of that. So you cannot ignore maths at all. Even if you are absolutely from an arts background, never ever rely on comprehension alone. Because uh, the answers for comprehension can be absolute, can be ambiguous many times. So you cannot simply attempt all the comprehensions and then say, okay, fine, I'm, I'm okay with it. 40, 45, you will have comprehension questions and five, seven questions are bound to go wrong. So you cannot only rely on uh, comprehension. So what you do is make a perfect balance. Like I was fine in quant, I was fine in all. So there are some people who are good at maths, I'll tell for them. You attempt the maximum number of maths and reasoning questions that you can, which will give you the foundation marks. Uh, it is very important to understand, no matter how much you hate maths, that quant and uh, reasoning will give you the foundation marks for CSAT. Because there will be an answer or there will not be an answer. You will know the question or you will not know the question. So if, if you are not um, committing any silly mistake, no. If you know the question, you will do it correctly only. So those basic foundation marks you can get by quant only. And then your comprehension can help you in increasing those marks. 
so for people who are not very good at maths you simply start practicing maths quant all of these from today itself now do not only rely on the mocks that you will go for or the in, uh, preparation that you will go for because whatever mocks are there no they are never able to unfortunately reach the level of upsc so start by practicing pyqs in the middle of your preparation again practice pyqs and towards the end again practice pyqs is it fine you want to ask some other thing i mean did i satisfy you i am you're not audible so i think i think you are muted unmute yourself okay. fine thank you okay you were asking something tell me how does that solomon am i audible One minute. One minute. I have an offline question here. One minute. Yes. Yeah. Ha ha. बिल्कुल. बताइए. अच्छा. अब self study बहुत important है. हम सिर्फ uh, I'll speak in English so that everyone understands. So uh, see, self study has to be complemented with whatever classes you are taking. Suppose even if you have a class for like five hours there. Uh, two and a half hours GS and two and a half hours optional. You make it a point. Come back at least revise whatever you have studied in the class. So initially, it's a long process. So initially, you give at least eight to nine hours every day, religiously, and please do not include that time when you are thinking about becoming a DM. When you lose the concentration, that means you're not studying. Don't include that time in your studies, please. Because I met a person. He used to say, "I was I was studying for." Uh, 10 12 hours and i was dumbstruck looking at him i can't do that so please don't include all that time when you are imagining stuff uh, the very serious study you at least go for 8 to 9 hours at least and then towards the end you go like keep increasing 10 11 and stop counting the hours great what you do is close your books and because anyways if your books are open the books will remain open only you will be imagining only so you have to cut that thought you close your books you think whatever you want to in the next 5 7 10 minutes then again open your books or what you do if it is lunch time close your books have lunch chill go out have a walk come back start study do not fight with yourself if you are feeling sleepy Yes, if it's the end of your preparation, you can go for four, five coffees like me. But in the beginning, don't fight with yourself, because if you fight with yourself, that volcano is going to come out someday. Someday, even before prelims, if your mind is all disturbed, no, it'll harm you. Don't fight with yourself. If you feel sleepy, take a nap for five, fifteen, twenty minutes. To be an IS doesn't mean you have to be a robot. You are a human. Everyone understands that. So don't fight with yourself. You think something. don't don't restrict that because uh, what does our heart do if i restrict someone from uh, i if i restrict a kid from playing he'll play only if i ask him don't play with glass he'll play with glass only i give him anything in the universe he'll play with that so don't stop your heart how much time will it take 5 minutes 7 minutes 10 minutes 1 hour 2 hours it's better than sitting before books for 10 hours and simply thinking so close your books take a walk take i mean think whatever you want to become the dm become the cabinet secretary then come back Yes, please. Um, so, uh, sorry to trouble you. Uh, there were some technical glitches from my side itself. I, I, okay. I it happened. So, can you please repeat uh, the prelims uh, part that you started off? How to prepare for prelims? Should, should I entire or it is recorded? It will be sent. um see it will be very difficult to repeat everything it will waste other people's time also we are recording the video so the video will be sent to you um, even if you have then issues no problem the video will be sent to you and one more thing if you have you have one yeah please ask me and for csat is it is it must to take uh, uh, csat classes or how did you go about that okay so uh, first of all give me tell you about i'm a doctor pardon please repeat doctor doctor okay so uh, in 11 12th you had maths or you had bio only uh, i had maths 
you had maths so then uh, do you have some particular issues with maths i mean till 10th maths till 10th is okay with you you can solve basic questions profit loss and stuff yeah i can solve uh, so but it's been a long time right so uh, see if then your background is similar to mine not as great as yours because i am also a biologist i studied zoology and i also had maths in 11 12th so if your background is similar to mine i can take the responsibility you need not go for any particular class if you do not have any particular problem with something like comprehension anyways you will not have a problem because you can practice it yourself also you don't need any particular coaching for that comprehension part if you talk about the quant and reasoning part no again you don't need some particular coaching if you can handle and uh, tackle those questions simply before going or thinking about any coaching uh, talk 2017 to 2020 like 17 18 19 20 csat paper you see how many quant and uh, reasoning you can attempt see what score is your maximum and minimum that you can go and then only like if you are not able to handle any quant and reasoning questions no only then go for some particular classes otherwise not required i did not go for any classes myself okay thank you any other question from the online hello uh, ma'am Ma'am, uh, actually, you left about uh, the optional. Ma'am, can you say something about optional? Okay, in general, I will tell you about optional. What's your optional? What is your optional? Sociology, ma'am. Sociology. Okay. So, in general, I'll talk about optional because my optional was unique. It was zoology. Uh, now as i said that upsc demands different things from different stages and different papers similarly upsc demands a different thing from your optional why is it an optional and why it is given 500 marks is that uh, they want to see how much specialized you can get if we give you a field so you have to show your specialization in the optional subject and you have to uh, show your generalization in 1 2 3 4 8 yeah that's it so in your optional you have to be absolutely well versed with whatever the specifics of your op optional are i have some exposure to sociology so i'll tell you something that if you start an answer with a philosopher or sociologist it will be great if you quote some sociologist in the middle it will be great if you quote some indian sociologist that will be even better so if you uh, if if there is a question on some philosophy and you can quote another uh, uh, sociologist with, with that uh, with that only that will again give you that will again give the examiner that yes you have understood also and you can apply also so for optional what you have to do is you make crisp notes out of because optional questions are mostly uh, very very predictable so every topic you should have ready made notes because optional is extensive whatever optional you take it will be extensive only so you should have notes for every topic that is there now one thing that i would like to say is don't go by the previous patterns one thing that uh, my senior told me that zoology paper is very predictable what you do you take up 2018 19 20 i mean 17 18 19 papers see the questions and simply prepare but what i i was a masters in zoology i didn't want to do that because i thought what if someone th something else is asked and i am not uh, i don't have any problem in preparing so what i did i prepared also those topics which were which have never been asked in the exam uh, which i could handle also so what happened this time luckily it was absolutely an unconventional paper no previous i mean one or two previous questions were asked so never go by this logic that whatever was asked previously will be asked again don't go by that and always remember you cannot write a general answer in optional you have to write a specific answer see your sociology will uh, it is it will overlap with gs2 also social issues and all of that now Uh, what you can do you can do one exercise you sit down write a gs2 question on uh, some topic like uh, women in a gs2 paper and you write a women related question for sociology also then you compare them both if you find some if you find that both questions are more or less the same that means you're going somewhere wrong in optional your optional uh, answer has to be very very specialized so focus on that and focus uh, more on your optional because it will carry 500 marks it can make or break you it can give you a better rank or a bad rank so be specialized number that this was asked it will last it will be asked again and number 4 value addition like if you your uh, this subject is very dynamic so complement again it with the, with your uh, current 
and if you can find some sociologist which is in news or something that is going on these days and you can find some unconventional sociologist for that it will be great anything else no ma'am thank you so much or an engineer you can do anything in the universe i believe that you can do anything in the universe if an engineer from a science background uh, four years you are studying your specialization something electronic i mean diverse sources no mechanical i know only two three so from that if you can come to a general background no hats off no matter what people say about engineers i have due respect for engineers because most of the highest people will be engineers so don't worry uh whatever you want to do you will be able to do any science background anyone on this earth can do it and uh, don't go i mean every engineer person has to go for i mean has to take an option that is from a scratch you you will hardly take your own subjects i fail to understand why sometime you tell me personally but uh, if you are starting from scratch that is okay see anthro and sociology are very uh, famous among the engineers so even talking from the background your topper is uh, this only and throw only and he got super awesome marks 320 so yes you will be able to cope up and the syllabus not very huge and and throw you can even talk to me because uh, there is, there will be some overlap between zoology and uh, anthro so you can talk to me about the sources also but don't worry you will be able to do it see i don't know your syllabus but if you have something about uh, evolution so then i'll tell you there is uh, veer balarastogi for evolution it says organic evolution book you read it and you will be able to answer any question read it yeah read wala rasto bhi so you will be able to answer any question you tell me the topic i'll tell you the book so you see the syllabus you can take my uh, yeah you then you tell me i'll tell you whatever sources overlap with mine i'll tell you don't worry also you will get uh, notes from for institutes also no anthro notes that you anyways do some other books if you need i'll tell you Uh, i should i tell you for everything i mean all the subjects okay so a very conventional question uh, starting from modern india okay i told you about spectrum uh, ncert i had some issues so i read india struggle for independence with chandra and i made notes out of it also if you have an issue with it i would recommend you read that book even if you have some time no read that book because it will help you build an opinion now talking about polity for prelims lakshmikanth is more than enough if you have super extra you can read dd basu but um, just like read it so that uh, you can write some nice lines in the mains introduction or conclusion or some nice lines he has written i mean he has written a book very nicely but if you want to read dd basu read it only after four or five times you've read lakshmikanth so polity uh, then geography i restricted myself to uh, the two ncr the ncrts not just two the ncrts that are there with us 11 12 basically if you have uh, some problem in the basics of geography so then you start from 6th only it will not take much time you can start from that and then you come to 11 12 uh, now old ncert if you would ask me geography is a very contemporary thing so it's not very much required that you read old ncert of geography i was simply interested in geography so i read it but i would not recommend it's too old uh, so don't read it so i restricted myself to ncerts plus gc leon very selectively Uh, you read the climate part also i did not but you please read it because i didn't like it i couldn't remember but you read it also some clouds chapter very very selectively like you don't need to read the landform thing you can uh, like the nancyati would suffice so very selectively read gc leon uh, then um, okay ancient medieval ancient uh, i read ncrt only plus for buddhism jainism you can also read the tamil nadu board uh, uh, ncrt and for medieval you see medieval was very boring for me 
so honestly i took up some classes and there were notes provided from that classes i simply restricted myself to those notes and luckily i got uh, one question from that those notes only so now it's my bible if someone wants i'll give you uh, otherwise if you don't uh, want to take any i would say if you are not very much interested or you don't like medieval no take some classes which particularly for medieval only because what that will do is when you hear something oh, that re re that remembrance is more so when you hear something you'll also understand and then you'll remember more if you don't want to do that you can again restrict yourself to the boring ncrt i didn't like it it was too boring for me but you people read that you have to read that uh, then uh, tell me the subject next what is it economics i uh, restricted again limited sources restricted myself to the uh, book uh, it's shri ram shri ram uh, latest latest edition and uh, this is the other book like the external book apart from that the ncrts have to be read two three times at least if you don't want to read microeconomics don't read it it's fine maybe you will not even understand but macro has to be read at, uh, read at least three or four times because questions will be from that only like it will be conceptual based even if it is a question on bond yield it's there in the ncrt people will be rushing for sources but you don't need to do that please restrict yourself to that macroeconomics book the 11th class book you can read for the trends in your economics but that is again old so complement it with the current affairs shri ram is for the comprehensive coverage like you know the final revision will uh, you will get from uh, shri ram book which is again a guide sort of a thing but keep complementing everything with your current affairs okay and uh, excuse um, me ma'am yes. i'm online here my name is sanjana i have background with humanities i don't know how to deal with csat i i don't have uh, the mathematical ability or the skills to like you know go back to school days and do mathematics i am well versed with uh, comprehension but mathematics is something i am unable to do csat paper how to crack csat is my question how did you cope up with it let me complete the uh, sources i'll get back to your question yeah thank you what is economic fine so economics also what i told you i'm repeating please uh, note down any graphs any trends you get and economic survey you should read very nicely even if you don't want to read the entire economic survey which has become very uh, lengthy these days also and not very interesting so what you do you at least read the summary and not at least you have to read the summary at least three or four times you don't need to make notes out of that uh, economic survey because anyways the summary is notes only the second volume you can uh, give less importance but uh, it has the data points so whatever data points you think and the trends so whatever trends and data points you think are absolutely necessary please please remember that and volume 1 has to be absolutely on your tips only then budget you have to be very well versed with the budget you read the original budget i would recommend um maybe later for remembering and learning sake you can take any summary of any institute which will help you in revising but please read the original budget also two or three times which i also did and i read it before interview also so before every stage read the budget read the economic survey what economic survey and budget will do is it will give a, also it will give you value addition in your gs3 paper so for mains also you read it and prelims absolutely necessary right what else science and tech you uh, uh, restrict yourself only to the current affairs portion because anyways if you are a, if you are well versed with physics you can maybe attempt the uh, static physics questions but if you are not from a biology background i would recommend you not attempting those questions because sometimes it can be really really technical like sometimes even i have to think that what the answer would be so you people please uh, do not attempt any bio question if you are not from the bio background so for uh, science and tech you can only uh, read the current affairs from any monthly and uh, focus on the sunday newspaper the hindu for science and tech right what else what are the subject is left ma'am right uh, international relations again current has to be you have to be well versed with for international relations what you can do is the editorials whenever there are editorials on ir no focus on them very very specifically because if there is a uh, there is an editorial on quad or maybe india us so they'll also give you a background so that is a spoon feeding for you you do not have to go to any you know any uh, static book because mostly the ir questions will be two three you will get but they'll be mostly current based so you focus on current but for the background what you do you you can search the internet also 
like you don't need to read big books for ir because if your optional is not psir so simply restrict yourself to the current affairs and give a background the backward linkage you can give by internet only right so um, and what you were saying ethics so ethics uh, again there is a book on uh, by atul garg sir you read that because uh, that book you will have to read at least five or six times to imbibe it within you because it will give all generic points but it will be very nice language and you can use those exact lines in the exam so please read that book uh, at least four to five times before the exam plus the exercise that i told you elaborately earlier the keywords and stuff uh, so this book will suffice everything it has everything for case studies also you can uh take this book it is in two volumes one is case studies and case studies are also wonderfully given uh so even if you don't want to go for any particular ethics classes this would suffice any other subject that is left out art and culture uh the ncrt 11th class fine arts and nitin singhania if you do not want to read nitin singhania completely which is also not possible you read it very very selectively or the nitin singhania notes which are available in the market you can read that because that is enough um if you want to take the book you do not go by those calendar and all those chapters which are there at the end only go by the very important selective chapters whichever you find in the previous year papers or the topics which are there in your fine arts no go uh, those topics only elaborately read from nitin singhania also anything else okay i just did it i mean it's it's very very simple it's not that hi fi even uh, what's your language hindi also and english so then that i can't tell you but yes english what you can do again you see the previous year questions they'll be manageable for you simply do two three papers which i didn't do but you do if you're asking me you do if you think there is some doubt in your mind you do that but don't go for any specific preparation for english as such if your uh, subject is hindi you can uh, you can take a basic book of uh, paryayavachi shabd and anul uh, vilom shabd all that you can do very very basic like a uh, very simple these are as a child uska bachche ka pucha tha the paryay bachche aur bachcha was asked so all that very very basic you do otherwise anyways the qualifying marks uh, you will get through essay and other grammar stuff only it's not very tough it's very simple don't worry uh, all all subjects covered agriculture should be from the current only there is no specific book we have not been able to come up with a specific book till now but in every compilation you get a particular thing of agriculture right you have a sub topic of agriculture focus on that focus on the current affairs prelims questions on agriculture if that's what you are talking about try to use logic if you can't leave it if there will be two three questions if you don't know the cropping pattern if you don't know something about anything don't do it some part will be covered in your human geography also like if you are talking about a question that was green gram and something it was very simple it does not need any specific knowledge per se and uh, there is a myth that yes this year there were many agriculture questions and we need a particular specific book for that but at least two to four questions were very much easily solvable by logic only like the bird chip thing that question was there that was very much solvable by uh, logic simple very basic logic even the green gram question that i'm talking about it was also i don't remember the question but i could eliminate uh, two options and i got to the answer so you don't need any specific uh, agriculture knowledge whatever knowledge you gain out of human geography and the environment part of the agriculture and the current affairs that is more than enough do not over stress on any specific thing whatever you are reading you no know, just keep imbibing everything and keep correlating in your head it it will be fine don't over stress about we are not an agriculturist so it's okay okay that's it ha uh, yes okay uh, first of all what you do is you read if you have fear factor no read the 6 7 8 10 crt book Uh, when you start find you start finding it boring no then stop and come to the 11 12th ncrt books read them multiple times solve two three questions see some uh, you know you can go for mapping all that is very interesting no keep a map in your room i had two maps india and world and whatever i used to read in the newspaper no, i used to myself locate it if i was not able to then i used to look into the internet but this gave me that interest in geography like if i am reading some every there was a lot going about uh, afghanistan 
so there were many cities of afghanistan coming up so then i used to keep it in my yes this is in afghanistan now when i'm seeing afghanistan no i'll also see its bordering countries then i'll also see how much border it shares with india does it share border with like that so when you start asking questions to yourself it will be great if you have some fear factor what you do you read geography talk to someone about it you keep roaming about you go for some traveling and then you see which river this is which land form this is this will give you an interest in geography because geography i find it personally very interesting because you see it around yourself then you see about delhi if you are in delhi see how much elevation delhi has the ridge area in delhi what what is the rainfall pattern of uh, delhi you see about your state what is the rainfall pattern of your state that will give you a uh, sort of interest you read 11th class book two three times maybe that will bring out interest in you and if you have some problem in geography you can go for some videos because that will be even great they'll give you some picturization and all that so you can go for some videos of geography right okay coming to the question online question of uh, humanities background and tackling mathematics so if you are not very uh, if you are not very fine with the mathematics of 10th grade also then i would recommend that you go for some classes which are going on for maths the basic maths classes if you take for a humanities background i would say that you take classes only because to be on the safe side it is not uh, possible and it is not very it, it's not possible to ignore quant and uh, reasoning so i would say first of all take classes and even during the classes try solving pyqs only and then you know keep practicing buy a book of arihant or any book which has a uh, multiple questions on one particular topic and try solving that that will give you confidence also and it will help you solve the questions also when you are taking classes focus on the areas which are mostly asked like averages are asked profit losses are asked percentages are asked these are very simple topics also time and work these four are very simple you can tackle them very easily once you are well versed with the formulae and the uh, logic behind solving that so take classes if you are not very comfortable with maths and then go for uh, practicing from a book also and from pyqs also anything else from the online students okay okay thank you so much and all the best to all of you for everything in life uh, also one thing do not take uh, upsc as the starting and end of your life please do not keep any baggage if your parents are doing something for you know it is their duty do not think they are doing too much i'll have to return all of this and that and don't keep that baggage in your head i am telling this because i used to do it so please don't do it whatever the people are doing for you this it's for you it is meant to be for you nature has kept it for you so don't think that this person is doing this i am useless i am a failure no failures are the stepping stone of success this line you must have heard hundreds of times but i am the example of this line because this was my fourth attempt this was the first time i cleared prelims so uh, i mean i have attempted many other exams also so if you want an example of failure i'm standing before you please don't fear any failure in life any failure yes no no break. i did not uh, leave even one exam this was my fourth attempt 2017 first attempt so thank you and all the best thank you Yes. Yes. So, for this, I'll have to see the syllabus. If it's the same, then <coughs> generally for zoology, I should have. Okay, great. So, I would like to know if the person's background is zoology or no, no. I mean, he has he done B.Sc. in zoology or okay. and what is the background sir if i can know even if he is a biologist then i can tell in that uh, zoology basic great from du i mean which okay so that much is enough it's okay okay so that's enough so so if you are um, if the optional is zoology and bsc is from zoology so then it is a, it's very convenient for you because whatever syllabus you have in bsc the same syllabus you will have in uh, optional also 
what you have to do is that you have to restrict yourself like in bsc we used to write really long answers even for a 15 marker 20 marker we used to fill up pages what this you do not have to do here you again have to restrict yourself and the note making habit that you that comes in handy from the gs that will help you so make notes for every subtopic this time you cannot go by reading all books like we used to read in bsc what you do is make subtopics for every uh, for every sub, uh, for make notes for every subtopic one thing that i did was there are uh, notes of evolution institute available so i took them as complementary with the books and notes of my own now notes i ma mainly made for the topics that i found them difficult i kept the diagrams very handy and uh, you can uh, like there are some topics which you cannot find from one source uh, of the book so what you can do you can simply read those institute notes they are very comprehensive and they'll cover everything now what i did was i thought that i'll uh, try to include diagrams and flow charts in most of the zoology questions because being a science student this is what comes in handy and this is what gives easy visibility to the examiner also so focus on answer writing uh, answer writing practicing more because we are very emotional while writing an optional answer we like to include everything but try to include only things that are asked also do not ignore anything that is there in the syllabus uh, there might be something that were deleted from your bsc and now you have it so please focus on them also i am not sure about the if there is some difference in the uh, zoology optional syllabus of uh, forest and civils but if it is the same then the strategy would be same only that focus on diagrams flow charts bullet points and try to make notes on most of the subtopics because our uh, syllabus is very extensive so for paper 1 G the zoology paper 1 you everything has to be ratified like for uh, vertebrates invertebrates don't make notes go with the kotpal book that we used to read in uh, bsc also but for all the other things especially in the paper 2 like genetics biotechnology all of that you can uh, make notes also it would be really great if in paper 2 you can include some contemporary things like if uh, biotechnology if there is a question on biotechnology so if you can write something about the three parent baby so that will be great that will give you a value addition and focus on paper 1 because it is less scoring um, so you know keep revising it 6 7 8 times so that you can remember it in the exam also. 